Hello and welcome to the demo video for the AI-12 Wave Animator, available now at AISynthesis.com and other fine retailers. The AI-12 is a wave shaper for non-pulse signals with an input here. If you have an AI-11 VCO, you can jumper the two modules in the back using a Eurorack power cable and that will normal the saw wave from the AI-11 into the wave animator. You can just break that connection by plugging anything into the wave animator. Right now we can see the saw from the AI-11 on the data in green, and we have the wave animator in yellow. Note that we're only going to hear the wave animator in this demo, where you will not be hearing the VCO. In this patch, we have a simple one note sequence triggering an AI-03, which is then opening up an AI-07 VCA, and we're hearing the wave animator through that. Let's jump into some features. The AI-12 has three attenuators for three CV ins for each of the three controls. The width controls the pulse width for both of the pulses and can be voltage controlled. So the 11 controls the frequency of the wave animator and it will react to saw, sine, triangle waves and any other like just non-square wave. It'll have an output, but it won't be any different from the square wave. So curvy waves are fun. So that controls the pulse width and the attenuator will control CV in. Extreme settings, it is possible to null out the width. So be aware of that when you're CVing it. The distance knob controls the distance between the second pulse and the first pulse. We can see that move and that's CVable via that attenuator. The amplitude controls the amplitude of the second pulse and it can be positive or negative. The cool thing about this circuit is that while it's completely analog, you can get some pretty cool ring mod, uh, what I call super square, or they're really super pulse waveforms, and uh, some very digital sounding bell tones. Let's explore those using control voltage. I've got the sport modulator by Topo Brillo, and let's add some CD. So we'll plug this into the amplitude CD, turn that up with the attenuator. This actually makes me miss my CRT scope because it looks really, really cool on a CRT. I'll plug this audio rate LFO, again from Topo Brillo, into the distance. This CV is being uh, fed through the, a VCA channel and controlled by the same envelope that's controlling everything else. Here we'll put in a slower LFO that isn't VCA controlled. Because that second pulse adds another phase, if you will, of you know your speaker moving back and forth, it is detected by our ears as an alternate pitch. So we can create vibrato sounds, and we can also create sounds that sound kind of unisony, detuned, uh, even though it's just one oscillator. Let's explore some bass tones. This patch is very similar. It's just the wave animator going into the low pass gate for some filtering, one envelope controlling a little bit of CV for the low pass gate, and controlling the VCA that we're hearing everything through. And we're going to use CV 
into the distance uh, CV control in order to experiment with some super pulse waves, some unison waves, some vibrato. to the pulse width. This is Abe from the future, uh, popping in, realizing I never actually explained what the damn thing does. So, oftentimes I call it a wave shaper. It's not really that. It's more like a, a oscillator controlled oscillator. The frequency of an input creates an output of a corresponding frequency, but a different waveform. That's what it actually does. So. It's designed around a saw wave, which is what is normaled to the back when you do the normalization thing. And we can see that when you do that, they're in phase with each other. I didn't even touch on the other waveforms, which was very silly of me, because um, it does other things. Um, however, they're not always in phase because of because what this does is measure the wave and then compare it to the pulse, and then that's how it creates the two the two pulses out of the one uh, shape. Um, so you can do it with a triangle wave as well. And that causes uh, pulses on either side around the crossing. But you can see that they're not exactly in phase. The half of the first pulse is at the midline um, of when it starts. So uh, slightly different there. Of course, your waveforms are almost never Unless you're using sync, they're not in phase either way. Um, a similar thing with uh, a sine wave. Um, so you could do different uh, waveforms. The only thing that doesn't really pay off is doing with um, uh, a, 
pulse or a purely up and down wave uh, because if you're using a purely up and down wave then um, there's no uh, crossing uh, that's going to be any different um, that's <laughs> that's my explanation okay back to the demo it was working on in the past Okay, similar patch, wave animator into the low pass gate. Low pass gate has no CV this time. It's just manual. And we've put the envelope um, into the uh, pulse width control. We're going to play with all three settings under control voltage. So it's an envelope for the pulse control and uh, it's still just two very simple LFOs from the sport modulator into distance and amplitude. The last thing we're going to show is its weirdest trick, which is being used as a sequencer with a clocked LFO from the Hermod. Uh, I actually don't have like a proper clocked synced LFO somehow, or a scaler. So we have to make do with the Hermod's LFO, uh, which we can see in green. The wave animator is triggering a plates off to the right in hi-hat mode. And with the Hermod, it's not a full peak-to-peak, uh, 5-volt -peak, peak peak-to-peak waveform, so that causes the pulse widths to be a little wonky, unfortunately. But this will demonstrate this odd thing you can do. By playing with the distances, we get these staggered pulses where the second of the second pulses is, is not on the beat and it can be wherever you want and we can add cv to that to control the distance and make it even stranger and wonkier so the first will always be on beat that first pulse but the second one will be staggered in accordance with distance and a cv control and it's pretty fun and strange I really want someone to make something cool with this and send it to me. So I unplugged the trigger to plates and now I'm going to trigger an envelope, an AIO3, that's triggering plates. That's why you've got that little white noise here. But this allows me to control the triggers. Mess with the modulation here. more chaos. It's like a broken, broken J. Dilla robot. <laughs> See, so yeah, it's 
now that second beat is shifting a lot more at faster modulation. So you get this broken beat. Anyway, that's the O12 Wave Animator, available now at AISynthesis.com as a fully built module in silver or black, BSB panel set, full kit, or just as a PCB. Thanks for watching.